Hello everyone, what's happening? I'm Gareth Master 974 back again with a Destiny Prison of Elder solo guide. This time we're covering the level 34 UX's Grudge Arena. As you can see from what I just showed you, this was the same week that I did the level 32 Broken Legion Arena. I've actually just come straight out of the voice recording of the previous Broken Legion video. So that video just needs to be rendered. Uh, I apologise if there's any ear rape in that video and in this video because what I'm using is my old webcam microphone. So that records I think slightly better than my headset microphone does. And for whatever reason it was just like massively peeking out the audio when I was listening to it in my video editing software. So I hope it doesn't translate into the video otherwise the beginning and end is just going to be ear rape for you guys and that's not good. Okay. So now we've spawned in. The one thing I haven't done so far is actually show you my loadout which is what I usually like to do so you guys have an idea of what kind of build that I'm running in this. So again, it's customary, this is my loadout, it's the same as it was in the previous arena. You can tell this was straight out of the Broken Legion arena because I never changed my rocket launcher from the Void rocket launcher that I had. Uh, normally that would be the Haze and Vengeance from the Vault of Glass raid, though you can have whatever you want in this case. I don't think there's anything that you absolutely need to beat this arena. Though I believe that one of the worst waves ever in Prison of Elders you can do next to the Skullless boss fight is going to be in this rotation of waves that we're going to have to be uh, dealing with today. And we'll be covering that later. I wish I could show you my dismay at uh, actually doing that arena because I'm like, you know, aiming my aimer my aim way to kill left and right to just like visually say no 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 it's this one but uh I think playing it it's not as bad as I thought it was so don't let me pick it up by saying it's the worst it's not that bad it's just you can die really easily but then you can kill really easily at the same time so it's one of those situations so this is the first wave the uh, first yeah the first round we got hive um, and I completely missed what the um, what the modifier was. To be honest, I wasn't really paying attention to it. So, oopsie. And that is me trying to kill an ogre and missing all those shots. And that was just ass. That was really bad on my behalf. Um, so now it's just a matter of killing all the enemies while you can. Not that bad. Just it's those ogres that are going to mess you up. So you just gotta deal with them when you can. As you see this is where I noticed I have the one rocket launcher so I switched back to the Haze and Vengeance which I like a lot better. Mostly because then you get that clustering effect afterwards and you, I just have like more ammo for it especially coupled with armamentarium with extra heavy ammo. That way you, you know you get like eight rockets so that's pretty damn useful. So all the enemies do spawn down that way, so yeah, they're like all following me now, all those acolytes and falls and all that, so it's like, don't, I don't have a grenade to use, that would be a great time to use it, don't have one. Now I've got to try and kill some of the falls, um, and I'm trying to use Icebreaker to take out the wizard solar shields. You don't need Icebreaker, you can use whatever you want. Um, in the description below is a link to my old... Um, set of captures where I did actually play through um, these exam arenas just at level 32 with the exception of the Broken Legion arena where I covered in my Broken Legion video if you haven't checked that out yet that that was done at level 32 because on the old set of captures I did it at level 34 so by doing this this way around I actually get to show you guys all of the level 32 and 34 arena solos and I'm also at this point going to have to get my ass going with the Skullless' Revenge soloed as well. Which means I need to do that three times because there's three different sets of modifiers for that uh, specific boss fight. And I do want to cover all of them so I've got my work cut out for me and it seems if in the next two weeks I've got 
more than enough work to be dealing with as is, so don't be mad at me if I don't get away into doing it right away. But um, I'll try and squeeze it in if I can. And by squeeze it in, I mean I'll probably definitely do it at some point, but you know, don't expect the videos to be going up anytime soon, even though I might play them soon. So there I am getting almost molested by the uh, bastard acolytes there. There's a hallowed wizard. That's probably going to be the biggest threat, but just keep your aim steady and you should be able to take him out. Um, a chosen knight? Well, guess what I can do, mate? Boom, headshot you with the icebreaker, and you're dead, and that's the round done, so happy days. Not even, well, I think it was about five minutes. I think when I did this initially, it might have been, or when I tried it before, it might have been sub five minutes or something. I don't know. Oh, it's four minutes forty. I'm, I'm getting. I must be getting this confused with uh, Broken Legion or something. Nice, relatively quick, straightforward round to get into. Avoid the ogres. Take out the wizards. Don't get shot up and die instantly. So, that's uh, my advice there for that first round. Where are we next? Oh, and I died. Yeah, as you can see, that means I died. So I've edited out the footage where I died. On round two, no less. Um, uh, it's one of the few instances, believe it or not, with small arms on. So this is actually a pretty decent round because you get small arms. So your primary weapon does more damage. And it's Cabal. I don't like the Cabal to begin with, but somehow I died. And as I was going to say, you can put it down to one of the few times where I actually got overwhelmed by enemies. And that is what ultimately killed me. And if I was actually going to put any effort into this, then I would have overlaid footage where it's like, oh, it looked like the mind diffusal, because you have to diffuse minds in this round as well, spoiler alert. But um, the mind diffusal got to like 89 or something, and I left because I had like just a fraction of a bit of health left, uh, just to try and get away. And then it's like, oh no, I've got to get back because I never diffused the mind properly, and you only got a few seconds left to diffuse it. And then it's like, no, nope, you get shot up and you get killed, and that's one of the reasons why when I was commenting in the uh, Broken Legion arena, I was complaining about my recovery being bad, because, you know, I could have need I could have actually dealt with the increased recovery, I probably would have needed it in that situation, just so my shields could recharge a bit, and then I could have run away and gotten back, but, oh well, that's all in the past now, so don't need to deal with it. First wave, relatively straightforward. At this point, I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'm pissed off, I'm just gonna dismantle all these fuckers. Where I was looking is where the more um, asinine enemies come in, they're the scions that are um, mages. So, they're gonna be the biggest threat, I guess, next to like centurions or phalanxes. At this point, I'm like, fuck you, I'm just gonna soup you up. Even though I know solar burns on. Fuck it, I'm just like, I'm mad now, you're gonna get screwed up. So, why I said earlier that this is not a bad arena is because obviously, yeah, you have to diffuse mines, and it's really lucky that the mine, diff you know, the mine after diffuse is right in front of my face. But, um, it's also because the mines that spawn in, and they usually spawn in the same places, so it's very, very predictable. Um, but you don't really have to go very far to diffuse them. So, you know. Like, take Skolas's Revenge, for instance, where you have to defuse mines in that boss fight. You may have to progress across the arena to be able to defuse the mines, and that's really difficult to do, especially by yourself, because you can't split your team up to take the mines when they're actually going to spawn in. Obviously, there's heavy ammo, and I don't need it, because I've got max maxed out rockets for the Haze and Vengeance, obviously. Uh, so yeah, that's why this is one of the better rotations of arenas that you can do. Now obviously there's a bunch of enemies here, so I'm like, fuck you, I've got to take you out, man. So take out the uh, Centurions, try and take out some of the, the Scions as well. Obviously with Solar, well, Small Arms being on, my apologies, misinformation here. Um, with Small Arms on, you should pretty much be using your primary weapon exclusively, because you'll tear up everyone that you need to with that. And obviously, there's higher health bar enemies as well that are more difficult to take out. But 
It's not that difficult, and I'm sure that phalanx there had some involvement with the um, fuckery that happened in the previous attempt at doing this round, so it was good to murder his ass. And now that mine diffused, that should be the round completed, because everyone else is dead, and I was aggressive in trying to actually kill everyone. So one of the few times you'll see me go ahead and beat the rounds and then it's like no you, you actually haven't done the rounds so now it says I've done it sometimes there's that delay when you've killed everyone and done the critical objective and the game doesn't know it so happy days that's another quick straightforward arena it says it took nine minutes because I died I think that was on the last wave as well I died so that's why it says it took that long that was probably another four or five minutes um, completion right there so th at this point now we're going to be moving on to the next round and the next round is of course Cabal again yeah believe it or not it's actually going to be another Cabal round this time we get exposure exposure is not good because it means your shields recharge really slowly so at this point because I don't have a suitable special to go to it's important. I just switch to Red Death and I show you that it's important to have the fully upgraded Red Death. That way, when you get a kill, it gives you basically some of your shields back. Uh, and that's very helpful. And we're utilizing some of the special ammo that dropped in the previous rounds, which we couldn't get because we had Icebreaker, which regenerates its own ammo. So, obviously, if you see the ammo there, then you know that this was my first and only attempt at this round to do this. Um, so yeah, obviously if you have a solar weapon, a solar special, then that would be ideal in this case because the um, Centurion shields are solar in nature, so if you have a solar weapon then they'll just, it'll be more helpful to you, to you. and that phalanx nearly messes me up right there, so I just uh, light of the abyss him up, which is the uh, special weapon that I got there, and finish him off with the red death. So as you see, when you get kills with the Red Death, then you actually end up getting some of your um, your health back, which you lose. Uh, of course, then, if you really pay attention, you'll notice the health bar goes up really, really, really slowly. Um, but, you know, you'll probably notice it more when you're trying it. And you don't need the Red Death, as I said. There's no real exotic requirements in order to do this. It just makes a difference between you having a really bad time and a reasonably okay time so if you don't have red death then it means you have to play it a bit more safely uh, otherwise you might end up in the low health uh, very early on and then it means you do have to you know be really really careful about what you're doing maybe it's an oversight on Bungie's behalf to make it so the red death gives you that much health and that back but um anyway so the critical objective this time around is to actually kill an uh, important target which isn't that bad because obviously they spawn out of the same place every time and all it is is just a high health bar um, centurion in this case so all you gotta do is just be able to take out one you know centurion major and then that's the critical objective which isn't really that difficult to be honest Maybe the difficulty is if you don't have Red Death and you've got no health, then you can't really kill him straight away. Um, and you can always super him up as well if you need to, but in my case, you don't need to. Just save it for the, uh, the phalanxes there that are just a pain in the ass. So, again, just running around at this point. So, I mentioned this a couple of times already, doing these Prison of Elder solos. Sometimes my strategy is a bit dynamic, so I'm moving all over the place. And other times I'm held up in one spot. I would argue this is one of the times where I'm more held up in one spot, which is like the center area where you get the um, scorch cannon or heavy ammo drop, and just try and kill enemies around there. And a time like now is where I'm trying to mix up the gameplay a little bit by going somewhere where I normally wouldn't, but still ultimately achieving the same thing, which is just kill all the enemies. At this point, I seem to have you know, screwed myself over by leaving all of the majors to the end, which is 
Not good. You want to kill all the mages with your super. That way you don't have a hard time. But then you want to keep the mages. So it gives you faster, uh, you know, faster super generated. So that's uh, what you have to balance in this case. There's one enemy left. He's coming up onto the right here. And of course it is a centurion. A regular centurion. So it's not that bad to take out. And now Valks presents a gift. What's he possibly going to drop this time around? Well, I could do with a couple extra rockets, but it seems as if he's gave me the Scorch Cannon. So in this case, what I'm going to do is my usual strategy, which is kill the VIP first, because he's a very important target. Once he's done, focus on some more of the enemies. So, three Scorch Cannon shots. VIP is dead very early on. Nothing to worry about. Other than kill every other enemy in the uh, arena right now. So nothing much to it basically. So that's uh, another fairly nice and easy round. To counter one of the possibly the worst rounds. That could be ever in Prison of Elders after this. So it seems like it's a nice straightforward run up. But um, the aftermath of this is... An arena that's not very good. Oh, a round, sorry, that's not very good. But uh, I'm not going to be complaining about it because, you know, I do get past it at the end of the day and I do have better equipment than I did back when I did it initially, which might contribute to why I think it's one of the worst arenas ever. It might be one of those things where you try it one time and you really don't like it and you never want to do it again, but maybe if you do try it again, then it might... Uh, it might not be as bad as you remember. So, just keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. For anything in real life. Just because you don't like it initially doesn't mean that, uh, you know, you won't ever like it ever. So, a nice straightforward round there. 6 11. Uh, I think I was going to make a joke here about it. Shame it wasn't 7 11. That way I can say it was a part time job. But, uh,. Nah, I'm not going to go... Oh, wait, I did go there, didn't I? Fuck. So, anyway. That was that round done. Now we move on to possibly... Right, get this, ladies and gentlemen. We're now possibly moving on to the worst round ever in Prisoner of the Elders next to Scarlet' Revenge. Boss battle, by the way. I have to say. In this case, what I'm going to do is try and go for an all-arc loadout. And I'm going to be changing my sub subclass slightly, so I get a overshield when I stand in a sunspot, basically. That way, the enemies don't insta-kill me. So I'm, I'm using Necrochasm and Light of the Abyss from Crota's End. And also some generic arc rocket launcher, which is the only arc heavy that I have that's not an exotic, I think. Or maybe the only arc heavy that I have. So this is why it's one of the worst rounds if you saw Arcburn was on and Arcburn means that any source that is Arc is going to do more damage not only from you but from the enemies so the Thrall here do Arc melees the Cursed Thrall their, their attack is technically Arc in nature uh, the Wizards have Arc projectiles the Knights fire Arc projectiles so they can really, really screw you up very easily. Which is why it's important to be able to deal with them really quickly. The Acolytes on the other hand, and even if Ogres were to appear in this range, they're not that bad. Because their attacks are void. So that's not going to be as damaging to you. And I guess essentially my Solar Grenades as well, they're not going to be as damaging to the enemy as opposed to my striker subclass at this point you see there's the uh, hallowed wizard that's why i had the um overshield in the sunspot because you saw how quickly that um that wizard just tore through my shield and the overshield and what was left of my shields you know you saw it just like go all the way down to like zero from it was just zero to 60 but in this case it was just 60 to zero it's just crazy what they can do so I remember this arena being a pain in the ass. There's knights, there's wizards, and cursed fools as well. So they're going to really, really screw you over. 
But at this point, I'm like, you know what? I might as well just head to where the final mine is because I know where it is. Once you've done it a few times, then you pretty much know where all the dismantle mine locations are going to be. Um, and that's the good thing about it. Destroy mines, the mines can be in different locations, though they're usually in the same locations. Whereas something like dismantle mines, they're always in the same locations. It's just the order that's different. And in an arena like this, it's not that bad. Because you can make it from one mine, from one extreme to the other, basically, without too much difficulty. And a miss on that magnitude with a arc rocket launcher is still enough to kill that wizard with an arc, a solar shield. So, oh, that's what I like about this. But what I hate about it at the same time is that you can deal massive damage, they can deal massive damage. So it's about uh, um, doing it right. You know, getting the balance correct of not taking damage but dealing damage at the same time. So at this point, it's like, yeah, I know that wizard's coming. I know he's there. Got an overshield. Now it's just like shimmy arrange, try and kill everyone that you can. Now the second mine spawns in. It's like, oh god, where the hell am I? Oh, okay, gotta, gotta run. Gotta get to that uh, mine to dismantle it. And as I was saying in the previous video. Uh, that's why I don't really like to dismantle the mines in Prison of Elders because you need to be able to make it possibly from one side of the arena to the other. Which is why I don't really mind the Cabal, Hive or even Vex dismantle mine objectives because they're all relatively close together. So you can make it with plenty of time like I did here even if the final mine spawns in while you're dismantling the penultimate mine. But ultimately... What you have to do is just, you know, get through Skullis' revenge, right? So that seems that's like the reason why you would get the uh, House of Wolves DLC. Is because you want to fuck up Skullis. Um, but that rain, that final boss fight, you have to kill a... Um, oh, you have to kill Skullis, but there's a critical objective in that boss fight. Where you have to go ahead and dismantle mines. And the arena is pretty big to dismantle the mines. So you have to be, you know, fucking fast on your feet to do it. And sometimes even if you're fast on your feet, you can't do it. But ladies and gentlemen, that's enough bullshit for this round. I did it. I actually got fucking through one of the worst raves you can go through. And I think I only died once. Uh, there might have been a cut there to say that I died. I think I did. Uh, that might have been because I never had the um, overshield when I was standing in a sunspot because that was, that was necessary there to not die instantly. Um, so now we're on the final round. It's Hive again. Of course this is the Urox Flame Prince. As you can see here solar burns on so I'm trying to now maximise my loadout to do ultimate solar damage and with some breaker subclass that's going to be very easy to do so i change back to simmering flames so my abilities come back faster when my super's fully charged um, and so the quirk behind this arena is that urox does this uh, emission of you like rage and it basically makes it's basically like the floor is lava so you can't touch the floor otherwise you burn, hence why solar burns on, because they have to find a way to make the solar this, this rage actually do significant damage to you. And this box this boss actually looks very, very, very similar to if not exactly the same, as that boss you have to kill in the sleeper simulant crest line. So you have all the hive um, knights and taken knights that spawn in succession in an order. And then at the, the end of it all, there's that uh, final boss. And it looks like a pretty much this, the blatant model of Yorx Flame Prince here. So that's pretty interesting, I would say. Oh, it shows how lazy Bungie are about creating interesting uh, bosses and all that. But uh, one thing you'll notice is that, because I have Icebreaker, what we can go ahead and do is just headshot the um, boss. We can headshot Yorx here. And we basically cause him to stagger. So every single headshot we can do is enough to stagger him so he's not attacking us. 
And so we can get ourselves in a nice steady pace here. Where it's just like, wait for him to stagger, then shoot. Wait for him to stagger, then shoot. Rinse and repeat for all of the icebreaker ammo that we have. And it should be enough to really mess him up. So the quirk, as I said, is that the fire, the, there's, the floor is lava. You can't touch the floor when the rage is active. Otherwise, you will burn to death very, very quickly with solar burn on. It means any solar damage is amplified. So that's just something you have to be very wary of. But as a solar main, you know, it means that you can get through this with relative ease. You, all we have to do is just be able to not touch the floor for 10 seconds at any given time. So it could be worse. It's not that bad, thankfully. So you'll see that, this, you know, anytime there's a hive boss, this is the uh, area I decide to camp in just because it's a nice little area. You can kill all the enemies if you really wanted to. I might have to edit that out, sorry. I might have to go over a little bit. Um, for anyone wondering, um, I just had sort of real life thing that I had to deal with right there. I'm probably not going to include it in the video, but it does mean I'm a little bit behind in terms of the uh, commentary now. And that's a shame, but uh, it is what it is at the end of the day. So, again, there's really not much, as I said. I, I mean, I already, you know, talked about my strategy here. So, even if this commentary is behind what I'm currently viewing right now, then hopefully you can still see that the concept is the same, which is when Uox does his rage, what you do is just stay up in the air as much as you can. And then when you have opportunity to do so, because I have, say, Icebreaker, then what we can do is just get up in a nice little rhythm of headshotting Urox because with Solar Burn on, Solar Weapons do more damage. And so you can just like get into this nice little rhythm of just shooting him in the head and causing him to stagger so then he doesn't hurt us. And then, you know, just keep that going because as you can see, we don't even... well. As you will see, hopefully, I don't know how far behind the audio is actually going to be to the video now, but um, just shoot him in the, in the head repeatedly with a primary weapon isn't enough to stagger him, but one shot with a sniper, it's, it just shows you that dependence on um, elemental damage, you know, in, in an arena like this. So it really isn't that bad. Um, and of course, because I have a solar rocket launcher as well, the Hazen Vengeance straight out of the uh, Vault of Glass 390 mode that I've only ever done once by the way I should point that out as well um, yeah that's something that would be it is very beneficial I would say and it would be a little bit better if you had say the exotic adept vision of confluence I never actually had the year one um, Vision of Confluence, obviously, because as I just said, I never beat Vault of Glass once, and that was the 390 version. I'm fairly sure that Vision of Confluence was a solar um, weapon. So if you get the Exotic Adept version, then it should have solar damage. So in a situation like this, that would possibly be better, but then you need to have some other solar sniper of some description to help you out. So, it is what it is. So, I don't know how I'm going to work it. I might leave a cut in the audio and then... So, there's going to be silence in the video, basically. But then... Um, then I can, like, catch up and sync it up later on. So, Gareth, 29.30. Okay, so we should be back now. Um, if there was a silence in the audio, then that's what it was. It's because I got distracted. And now I'm trying to sync it up so I'm in line with the video. Because there are some important uh, gameplay choices coming up on my behalf. Um, right at the end of this arena. So Yurik summons his rage. 
So what we have to do is basically ensure that we don't touch the floor. And this is the questionable gameplay choice right now because because the boss has so little health, I'm thinking now would be an excellent time to try and finish him off with an expert pro level super because solar burn is on and we do more damage. But as you say, there's a whole bunch of enemies. Oh shit, this ain't the best. Uh, Hazen Vengeance saved me. And he's dead, fucker. Yeah, we did it. We beat goddamn Urux, that ass wipe. In, and with one of the worst waves ever in a Prison of Elders. So, you gotta be kidding me. I've got another Husk of the Pit doing this. So, I've done three videos now. And in every single video I've done, I've got a Husk of the Pit for doing it. So imagine how bad it was to try and get that in year one Destiny. Now I've got like fucking four in three videos. It's like crazy. So as I said in the Broken Legion video, if you need Husk of the Pits, do Prison of Elders soloed because you most definitely will get one. Though you probably do need to be end game level to even do it to begin with. So there we go. That was the Eurox Grudge arena soloed and of course as customary in these series i'm going to get this dead ghost every single time i can because it's always there and this might be the first time people are going to notice it so hopefully that helps you out and the rewards obviously for doing this is that we get an etheric light and a weapon core and the rewards i get this time around is the kel slayer's cure and the mark of a kel slayer so again no weapons, no items at the postmaster or anything. That should be everything that yeah, we get. And of course the husk of the pit as well, but that's not uh, that, that that's not necessarily something that's going to be very beneficial as I already have the necrochasm by doing the Crater's End raid. Um, just give me a minute please, I'm finishing off a recording at this point. Um, yeah, that's real life stuff, by the way. I died two times, 442 kills. And um, I don't show you dismantling the weapon core, at this, or armor core in this case, because I was just a bit hasty to finishing off the video. I didn't finish off the video properly last time. So I'll just review what I got and show you that I beat all the arenas. And that that's it, okay? I'm going to have to rain the video off here. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you found it helpful. And see you next time.